Hello and welcome to the Old Flyers. In a recent video, I listed 20 exceptional World War II fighter aircraft. A contributor said that I should have considered the Dornier DO-335. Just goes to show how subjective a list can be. So, let us look at that Dornier and see if it deserves inclusion. The Dornier DO-335 file was a heavy fighter whose performance was predicted to be better than any other World War II twin-engine design due to its push-pull configuration, low drag inline alignment of the two engines. first flew in October 1943 and was Germany's fastest piston engine aircraft of World War II as it could fly at 412 knots at 21,300 feet. Impressive, but slow compared to the ME262 first flown in April 1941, which was 78 knots faster. Only a handful of files were delivered before war's end. Thus, it didn't make our 20 most successful fighter aircraft list. The origins of the Dornier 335 trace back to World War I Claude Dornier, who designed a number of flying boats featuring remotely driven propellers and tandem engines. Tandem engines were used on most of the multi-engine Dornier flying boats that followed, including the DOJ Wall, and the gigantic Doe X. There are many advantages to this design over the more traditional system of placing engines on each wing. Drag is less and the weight of the two engines is kept on the center line, thus increasing roll rate and that is important in a fighter. A single engine failure does not lead to asymmetric thrust and in normal flight there is no net torque, so the plane is easy to handle. The cruciform tail surface in the rear fuselage design included a ventral vertical tail fin assembly that projected downwards to protect the rear propeller from an accidental ground strike on takeoff. The rear propeller and dorsal fin mounts incorporated explosive bolts to jettison them before an ejection was attempted. Not much good if you safely eject, only to be chewed up by the rear propeller. The DB603A engines, delivering 1,730 horsepower each, were the largest inverted V12 aircraft engines mass produced during World War II. General Field Marshal Erhard Milch said of the file, it would hold its own in speed and altitude with the P38 and it does not suffer from engine reliability issues." End of quote. On the 23rd of May 1944, Hitler, as part of the Emergency Fighter Program Directive, ordered maximum priority to be given to the Dornier 335 production. The main production line was intended to be at Mansell, but a bombing raid there in March destroyed the tooling and forced Dornier to set up a new line at Oberpfaffenhofen. I know I pronounced that wrong. Approximately 22 pre-production aircraft were thought to have been completed and flown before the end of the war. French ace Pierre Klosterman claimed the first Allied combat encounter with a file in April 1945. He describes leading a flight of four Hawker Tempests from No. 3 Squadron RAF over northern Germany when they came across an unknown aircraft whose description matched the Dornier 335 flying fast at treetop level. Detecting the British aircraft, the German pilot reversed course to evade. Two pilots fired on the Dornier, but Klosterman, despite the Tempest's considerable low altitude speed, decided not to attempt to chase it, as it was obviously much faster. When the United States Army overran that Dornier factory in late April 1945, only 11 single-seat fighter bombers and two trainers had been completed. 
One Dornier 335 survives, built in April 1945 and captured by the Allies soon after. Two files were shipped to the United States aboard the Royal Navy's HMS Reaper, along with other captured German aircraft to be used for testing and evaluation under a program called Operation Lusty. One of those files went to the US Air Force to be tested, its fate unknown. The second went to the Test and Evaluation Center at Pat Auxent River Naval Air Station. In 1961, it was donated to the Smithsonian's National Air Museum, though it remained in deteriorating condition at Norfolk for several more years before being moved to the National Air and Space Museum storage facility in Sweetland, Maryland. In October 1974, it was returned to the Dornier plant for a complete restoration. The Dornier workers, many of whom had originally worked on that aircraft, were surprised that the explosive charges built into the aircraft to blow off the dorsal fin and rear propeller prior to pilot ejection were still installed and active 30 years later. That aircraft can be seen today at the Stephen F. Udsvar Hazy Centre of the National Air and Space Museum alongside other unique late war German aircraft. Comparable aircraft of the role and era are Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to encourage new content.